Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2013 MHS graduation ceremony. Would you all please rise and gentlemen, remove your caps for the singing of the national anthem by seniors David Godwin, Asia Gribb, Jessica Robitaille, and Michael Zappala. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets were blown, the bombs bursting in air. Gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the You may be seated. We would like to welcome Mayor Diana, Chairman Patasini, members of the Board of Education, Interim Superintendent Kissel, Central Office Staff, Principal Geary, members of the MHS Administration, faculty and staff, invited guests, family and friends, and most importantly, the graduates of the class of 2013. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to tonight's ceremony. It's always a great thing to have so many people come together for such an amazing event. To begin tonight's program, I would like to introduce the interim superintendent for the Manchester Public Schools, Dr. Kissel. Thank you very much, Sam. Members of the Board of Education, faculty, and administration of Manchester High School, families and friends of these graduates, I'm very pleased to be here to join you in the celebration of this graduation. Graduates, congratulations to all of you. You should be very proud of yourselves for the accomplishing the, most, the, the first of the major goal in your life. Well done. To the families of these graduates, Congratulations to you as well. Your support has made an enormous impact on these graduates, and I'm sure you're very proud of them as they complete the first of many important milestones in their lives. A special thanks to the administrators and teachers of the Manchester Public Schools for their help and guidance in providing these graduates with the knowledge and skills they need to take them beyond their graduation. Manchester High School has much to offer, as these graduates would testify. I continue to be very optimistic about the future of our high school and the excellent recognition that it already has and will continue to receive from this point on. As a superintendent, I, has, I, have, I guess I have the prerogative to offer our graduates some simple advice, uh, maybe because of my own age and my own experience, but I'll try to do that. You have before you an exciting life. There'll be many things you'll do, and there'll be some disappointments along the way. And I know there are going to be days of when you get up in the morning and you know that things aren't just going the way you had planned. 
that's when you have to tell yourself things will get better. There will be times when people will disappoint you and let you down. But those are the times when you have to remind yourself to trust your own judgments and decisions and keep focus on believing in yourself and your dreams and your goals. There will be many challenges you're going to face in your future, as well as some changes that you'll need to make in your life. And as difficult as those challenges might be or changes might be, it's up to you to accept them, deal with them, and act on them. In order to achieve what you want, you must first decide what you want. Some people get stuck trying to figure out what they want because they can't see how it's possible to achieve what they want. They come up with all kinds of excuses and reasons why their dreams and goals are not possible or achievable. Know what you want and act on it. So to keep my message simple, follow your dreams, set reasonable goals, allow yourself to grow and improve yourself, and believe in yourself, and have confidence in your ability to achieve whatever you dream in the future. Thank you very much, and best wishes to all of you, and good luck. It's my pleasure to introduce to you the Chairman of the Manchester Board of Education, Mr. Christopher Patasini. Thank you, Dr. Kissel. Good evening, Class of 2013. As Chairman of the Manchester Board of Education and on behalf of the Board of Education, I'd like to congratulate you on a job well done. Graduating from high school is one of life's great milestones. Take time to enjoy it, relish the memories, and dream of your future. But tonight, let's celebrate your success. Among you this evening, totaling 416 graduates, there are 43 National Honor Society members, 82 capped scholars, and 94 honor students. Each and every one of you should be proud of your accomplishments and excited about your future. After graduation, fully 88% of this graduating class plan to attend post-secondary education. In fact, more than half of this class had already completed college credits, totaling 1,617. Now for your parents, that represents a combined total of $1 million in college savings costs. I have a unique perspective on this graduating class because I'm not just the board chair, but I'm also a parent this evening. Our daughter, Madalena, is graduating. As a result, I've had the pleasure to attend many of your concerts, ceremonies, athletic events, and club activities. I saw the school, mu the school musical, the flash mob video, and of course, your latest lip dub video, Red Storm. You've shown us what strong character and good behavior can accomplish. As one small example, earlier this year, Manchester High School and its athletes were honored with the Central Connecticut Conference Sportsmanship Award for character and conduct. In addition, as seniors and leaders in the school this year, you contributed more than 3,000 hours of your time to community service. Project range from collecting food for the Mac Food Pantry, raising funds for Relay for Life, and funds for a defibrillator for Northwest Park. My hope is that your lives continue to give back as you advance in life. Thank you, Class of 2013, for your service to your community. At this time, to honor the ultimate in giving back, I ask that those 19 graduates who have accepted a commission for the United States Armed Forces to please rise so that we can properly recognize you.
Let us all this evening be the first to congratulate you and wish you Godspeed. In closing, I ask that each of you graduating this evening take time to thank those who have helped you achieve your goal. Creating thoughtful, intelligent, respectful members of a community requires teamwork. Learning occurs in our schools through the help of teachers and staff, but more importantly, it begins in the home. Be sure to thank your teachers, parents, guardians, and families this evening. To parents and guardians and families here, thank you for sharing your children with us so that together we can take pride in their accomplishments. Congratulations to the class of 2013. At this time, please help me in welcoming the captain of the 1979 Manchester High School football team and our mayor, the Honorable Leo Diana. Good evening. Welcome family, friends, educators, dignitaries, and the class of 2013. On behalf of the town of Manchester, I congratulate you for receiving your degree tonight. This night uh, presented a conflict for me because the deputy mayor called me and said, June. 20th, you have somewhere else to be at 7 o'clock. I said, no, I only have one place to be, and that's here witnessing this graduation. He said, but this is an appointment that you can't miss. I said, listen, Deputy Mayor Moran, I'm, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be in Hartford. He said, okay, I'll tell the governor that you're not coming. <laughs> I said, I'll be there, and I will be there. This is an accomplishment that you guys uh, will remember for the rest of your life. And over the years after I graduated from Manchester High in 1979, I traveled in college and then went to law school. And I lived in places like Washington, D.C. when I went to American University. I lived in San Francisco. I lived in Columbus, Ohio. And I've lived in Manchester. And in my travels, I've met many wise, brilliant people, learned many things. I've even seen the Dalai Lama. I saw him because I bought his book and his picture's on the back. <laughs> um, but I've learned how to find happiness in life. And I'd like to share a couple of these secrets with you tonight. Do everything in moderation. Learn that life isn't always fair. Enjoy each day. Maintain your friendships. Keep things simple. Smile. Don't doubt yourself and always try your best. Remove the words I can't from your vocabulary. Pursue your interests and not other people's. As you approach your next opportunities in life, challenge yourself. Live by standards and enjoy your life to the fullest. Congratulations. Mr. Tyler will now lead the roundtable singers in On Children and Wanting Memories.
Good evening. On behalf of Manchester High School's Class of 2013, I welcome and thank you for attending. As I stand before this class, I am amazed. A sea of Manchester red, all anxiously awaiting names to be called, and the lone walk towards such a culminating moment in time. Our generation is often defined by countless social media outlets, as well as, ironically enough, a social disconnect. We have been labeled by this world as lazy procrastinators, ungrateful at times, and a bit too outspoken. How have we allowed these generalizations to form? For years, day in and day out, we have shared this journey together. As we go forth, we must continue to prove these cynics wrong. Remember that there will always be someone ahead of you, as well as behind. Remain humble. Never waste time with jealousy. Do not hope for an easier path, but be grateful for the strength acquired in tribulation. Remember that kindness is free, and time is the most valuable commodity. Fully appreciate the family and friends who stand beside you through your journey. Be quick to say thank you, to help others, and to simply smile. Do not conceive happiness as an end, but rather a way of life. Always remember to wear sunscreen. <laughs> Embrace each moment, as one day you will look back and question how those very moments have suddenly transformed into old stories and good laughs. We have been provided with the tools to create and thrive as individuals. Now, it is up to us to discover how our unique abilities can benefit the whole. Educators have the unique ability to meet the demands of a job alongside teaching. We ask you, educators, to continue this work, and we call you to action. Reserve your frustrations replenish your dedication, and reignite your passion. I am deeply honored to introduce our Teacher of the Year, Ms. Mazada. Okay. Good evening, families, friends, and of course, graduates. I realize that your days of sitting back listening to high school teachers is over, so I will try to keep my comments brief. First, I want to thank each of you for being part of the world at Manchester High School. Some of you I've gotten to know through brief conversations in the hall, whether it was a good morning, a quick smile, or a polite yes when asked to put a cell phone away. Thank you for showing how respectful young adults could be. Some of you were students in my classroom, whether it was algebra, geometry, a capped class, or even calculus. Thank you for making my experience challenging, exciting, and fun-filled every day. Whether spending time during extra help sessions, sharing personal stories, or hanging out in 271, thank you. And for those of you who braved the world of calculus for two years with me, to you I simply say, you may still have 99 problems, but calculus ain't one of them. <laughs> so why am I thanking you all this evening? Well, once upon a time, I was young. 
I grew up in a large family with a dad who worked lots of hours at a blue-collar job that he loved. He always told us that if you can, do something you love to do. But no matter what, you do it with pride. And he did that for over 40 years before retiring. My mom, a very talented woman, chose to stay at home and raise five children with very little money and very little space. She was that mom who nurtured the entire community around her and made everyone feel like family. She still loves taking care of others, and she's always done it with pride. I came from a neighborhood and culture where school wasn't always a big priority, and liking school was pretty rare, but I did. I loved learning throughout elementary and middle school and somehow ended up in honors courses. As I started my high school years, I had a lot of different experiences, some good and some that I probably should have avoided. I was trying to prove to my neighborhood friends that I still fit in by pretending that school didn't really matter. Yet I secretly got A's and, yep, still love to learn. I also, unfortunately, had a few bad teachers when I was in high school. Some who just didn't seem to enjoy their time with students. I will always remember one in particular who had a great impact on me. He treated me differently than the other honor students because of where I was from, the crowd that I hung out with, and the way that I dressed. He made it clear that he didn't think I belonged, and he reminded me of it quite often. So I had a choice. I could believe that I didn't belong, or I could prove him wrong. I chose the latter. Then, during my junior year, I realized, you know, I had some great teachers who truly did care about their students. They took an interest in us and made us feel welcome and important. And again, one in particular stands out for me. He never judged me or questioned where I belonged. He just had a sincere way of making us all feel special and significant. It was these influences that really pushed me to break away from the neighborhood culture and norms. It wasn't an easy transition, a few altercations and some explaining to my parents, but it was worth it. It was also then that I realized that I had options after high school, and with lots of support and encouragement, I was the first one in my family to go to college. Now, my time in college wasn't the traditional path through higher education, as I worked up to 40 hours a week to pay tuition, fought for scholarships, transferred schools, and stayed conflicted between getting a job or finishing school. But as I struggled through, I started to wonder about what my future would actually be. And it was then that I decided that I wanted to be a high school teacher so I could help students survive the difficulties and confusion that I had experienced. I wanted to be that teacher who encouraged students, made them feel significant, and helped them to find the confidence to do what they felt was right. It was something I truly believed in. And not only would I love to do it, but I would do it with pride. So I stand here before you today thanking you, not only for letting me be a part of your time at MHS, but for you being a part of mine. I give thanks every day that I get to work with some of the most incredible young students while you're growing and preparing for your own future. I share your experiences and play a part in shaping your path to adulthood. All right, I also throw some math problems in there. But every time you said hello to me in the hall or enjoyed yourself in my classroom or just stopped by to hang out, you shared in my success. You see, I live my definition of success every day, and it's amazing. Now, we all wish you great success tonight. And as you make important decisions about your future, here's a few things to think about. Never take for granted the influence that the people in your life have on you. Simple advice from parents, interactions with teachers, friends, even acquaintances can have an effect on the decisions you make in the future. Take something away from all of your experiences. They've made you the person you are today. Also, never underestimate the impact that you have on others. Your words and actions, good or bad, can have a lasting impact on the life of another individual. Had it not been for the people in my life, I may never have realized my definition of success. My hope for you today is that you each find your own definition. This may not be easy, and you will have some difficulties along the way, but you'll find it. And when you do, work hard for it, and don't let anyone or anything stop you from reaching it. In the end, I hope that you get to do what you love and that you do it with pride. 
Congratulations, class of 2013. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you, Ms. Mazzotta. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our class's valedictorian, Sarah Mangifico. <laughs> fearless. When I think of the word fearless, I think of so many things. I think of adventures, new experiences, exhilaration, excitement, courage, and most of all, taking risks. Although the word fearless sounds like it is not associated with any fear, it ironically is. Taylor Swift summed up the definition of fearless perfectly when she said, to me, fearless is not the absence of fear. It's not being completely unafraid. To me, fearless is having fears. Fearless is having doubts lots of them. To me, fearless is living in spite of those things that scare you to death. From the first day that we walked through the doors of MHS until now, we have all done fearless things. Our freshman year, we were fearless when we nervously entered into a huge school that we didn't know our way around. Even when we had trouble finding our classes, like I did, we stuck it out and figured out where to go by using maps and asking others for directions. We were fearless when we walked into our classes and faced a class full of mostly unfamiliar faces. We were also fearless when we joined new clubs and activities that required tasks and skills all too new to us. We were fearless when we took a few deep breaths and faced our midterms and finals for the first time too. Eventually, freshman year ended and we were faced with the new challenges that came with our sophomore and junior years. We were faced with more homework, more material to learn, and more responsibilities. I know that some nights I was up very late still doing homework and I was up early the next day still trying to finish it. But I kept up my grades because I wanted to be fearless. Like me, all of you athletes, musicians, performers, and students in other activities were faced with more competi competition, challenges, and the need to perform even better than you already were. We were able to get through anything that tried to get in our way by being fearless and by getting back up even when we were knocked down. Despite all of our challenges we faced in our freshman, sophomore, and junior years, we survived and finally became seniors. Throughout our senior year, we faced even tougher challenges. We had to go through the torturous process of deciding what we wanted to do with our lives after high school, which was associated with applying to colleges, applying to various jobs, applying to join the armed forces, deciding what colleges we wanted to go to, figuring out how we were going to pay for college, or how we were going to support ourselves with whatever we were going to do after high school ended. Eventually though, we figured it out and have made it to graduation after going to fun events like the senior picnic and the senior prom. We would not all be sitting here right now if we had not all taken some risks and had not been fearless. Of course though, many of the risks that we decided to take would not have been taken without the guidance that we received from our support systems. I personally don't think that I would be standing up here right now if I hadn't received the support that I received throughout my high school journey. Thus, at this point, I would like to pay tribute to those who supported me. One of the biggest providers of support for me was God. Without God, I would not have been able to have sat down and spent so much time studying and doing homework for the past four years. I probably would not have had the motivation to try my best without knowing that God was holding my hand every step of the way and I am grateful and blessed for all the times he has helped me face any challenges that kept me from succeeding. My mom, dad, stepdad, and sister also have all given me the support that I need to be fearless and to get to where I am today. They have all pushed me to do my best and were there with me for my entire high school career. Mom, I want to thank you personally for always giving me advice and listening to my problems whenever I needed someone to talk to. And dad, I wanted to thank you for making me laugh whenever I was feeling sad or stressed out. All of the faculty at this school has also helped me get to where I am today, and I thank them for supporting all of the fearless choices that I made while in high school. And lastly, all of my friends helped me be fearless by pushing me to do things that I have never tried before and by always being there for me. 
Thank you to everyone who has supported and been there for me, and I'll always cherish all the memories I have with all of you. So now it's graduation, and although our time in high school has come to an end, our time to be fearless has not. This is just the beginning of our lives, and we have the opportunity to do anything that we want to do. The only things that are holding us back are our fears. So let's face them. Let's face them like we did at MHS by being fearless. By being fearless, we can go wherever we want to go in life and live with no regrets. I wish you all luck, and I hope that you will all continue to be fearless. Thank you, and go class of 2013. I would, not, I would now, thank you. I would now like to welcome Samuel Akabellis to the stage again. Thank you. Good evening, fellow graduates, family, friends, and faculty. I'm Sam Acabellis, and it has been a great honor to have served as your class president for the past two years. Four years ago, we embarked on a journey that would change who we are as students, leaders, friends, and people. We have endured some bumps along the road, but as we accept our diploma tonight, 387 unique statements will be made solidifying the choices we've made and the path we've taken. As this leg of our voyage comes to an end and we embark on our separate ways, please remember that we are eternally bound to one another. Memories and experiences connect us, whether they are the elation of success, winning homecoming three years in a row, I, I do not care what any judge says, we know perfection when we see it. Um, <laughs> or the difficulties of loss and how we are able to pull one another up by our bootstraps. High school is the foundation upon which we will build for ourselves and our community. It is our North Star, the beacon to which we will sail towards when waters seem to be roughest. College, career, and family may seemingly weaken the bond, but regardless of where life takes us, the connection has been tempered with tears of sorrow and loss, the triumphs of success, and the joy of camaraderie. We have the obligation to maintain this link because I have seen with my own eyes the sheer magnitude of our class's accomplishments when our ideas, efforts, and passions culminate. We all have seen athletes put their teams before personal aspirations, musicians who put the excellence and quality of the ensemble above their own performance and ego, and most importantly, the volunteer who put recognition behind the goal of the group. Heart and tenacity have united us and that same spirit will bind us for years to come. During our time at Manchester High School, trophies have been added to showcases, banners have been raised in the gym, and names engraved on countless plaques. These commemorations will not be what we will be remembered by. The relationships formed by faculty, staff, the community, and most importantly, one another, will be the mark the class of 2013 leaves on MHS and the town as a whole. These relationships are the footprints we leave at our school and will be the elements of high school that will hopefully lead to the success of each and every one of us. Mother Teresa embraced a certain philosophy that hopefully we can all keep in the back of our minds, not only in college or at work, but in our everyday lives as well. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of acting selfishly or have or having ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you, are un if you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world you best to the best you have, and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and your God. It was never between you and them anyway. If I, may, if I may add my own verse to these eloquent words. If you love deeply, you may find yourself heartbroken, alone, or filled with doubt. Love with the wholeness of your heart anyway because there is no other way to love. 
Thank you so much. Congratulations. And may happiness, success, and love follow you wherever life takes you. It gives me great pleasure to welcome the class of 2013 Secretary Annie Nolan, Treasurer Joshua Essick, and Katie Walsh, our Vice President, to make our class presentations. These three uh, officers have become some of the closest friends I've made in high school. And can we give them another round of applause? They are unbelievable. They put so many hours into our class. They're truly, really great workers. Thank you, Sam. Life presents opportunities. With each one, we have a decision. Should we seize it or should we let it pass by? We are in this room because we chose to earn a high school diploma. Although tonight's graduation marks that end, it is also a new beginning. But before we look to the future, let's first thank those who helped us achieve this honor. Our parents, our loved ones, teachers, and friends have impacted and guided our lives. They've invested their time in us so that we would be prepared for this day and life outside of Manchester High School. Time, a most valuable commodity, is often wasted. So before this night is over, let's use some of our time to thank those people for all they have done. If that person is no longer with us, take a moment to reflect on the imprint they left. Then, we will be reminded to never forget the people who cared for us and shaped our character. Thank you, Josh. The graduating class of 2013 is made up of countless thinkers, builders, and leaders. I am proud to have been a peer and a friend of so many imaginative and successful people. However, we couldn't have gotten to this point without the help of an amazing team of staff members. First, we would like to thank our grade level assistant principals, Mrs. Hayes and Mrs. Sorne Moyano, and our secretaries, Mrs. Moore and Mrs. Scolo. The time they spent and the energy they used is greatly appreciated. We'd also like to thank the tech crew and Mr. Fairbanks for all of their hard work as well. We would like to thank Mr. Farrell for his efforts with the Redline page this year. He made every school event available to us with a simple click, double tap, or retweet. Student involvement increased immensely because of Mr. Farrell's hard work. Mrs. Wobble has been an instrumental part of our success as a class. We, as our class officers, often were not sure how to plan or execute events. With her help, we became aware of what needed to get done and how to do it. Not only has Ms. Wobble been a great help to our class, she is always friendly, giving students a wave or a smile if they pass her in her office. Thank you for all your help. To our class advisors, Mr. Casey and Mr. Pritko, I know I'm going to miss stopping by room 169, our headquarters, to plan and discuss whatever needs to get done that day, or even just to catch up. I feel blessed to have been able to work with such humorous and hardworking advisors throughout my four years at MHS, and I know my fellow advisors and many other students feel the same way. Even when things felt uncontrollable, you two found a way to make us laugh and to overcome the problem. Thank you for your guidance. And this isn't goodbye because there will always be something new that needs to be Googleized. <laughs> Finally, to my fellow classmates, I don't know about you, but I'm really going to miss MHS. Thank you for being the reason that it's so hard to say goodbye. Good luck, and I love you, 2013. Thank you. Thanks, Annie. There's one more person Annie and I would like to acknowledge. This year, Manchester High School was fortunate enough to welcome a new leader. After a period of disarray, an innovative educator arrived at our high school with a vision to provide change. Change is often coupled with disagreement and contempt, but because of his imagination, Manchester High School is headed towards a promising path. As seniors, we only wish we were here to embrace all of the upcoming opportunities. So with that, please join me in welcoming our dedicated principal, Mr. Geary. Guys. Distinguished guests, parents and families, faculty and staff, and most importantly, graduates, it is my pleasure to be with you tonight here as we celebrate the class of 2013. 
You have laid the foundation for a new and improved Manchester High School that we will continue to build together going forward. In my short time here, I have found the members of your class to be talented, articulate, committed, and creative. Sitting among the graduates this evening are multiple winners from state and national competitions in academics, athletics, art, music, culinary arts, fashion design, business leadership, and robotics. You have seen 163 students from your class invited to the Super Senior Dinner and participated in many fundraisers supporting many worthy causes. The class of 2013 produced the first color, all color yearbook in the school's history and saw the launch of our cutting edge MHS Redline website. The spirit of your class was perhaps best epitomized by the lip dub that took place last week, or maybe two weeks ago now, when over 400 students representing the diverse population of Manchester High School lined the halls after school. You are critical thinkers, dedicated scholars, creative artists, talented musicians, committed athletes, and compassionate friends. The work you've done during your time here has helped produce a more positive school climate and made our school a better place. As you graduate tonight and begin the next phase of your life, I'd like you to think about how you will make the world a better place. In her commencement address at Rutgers University, Nobel Prize winning author Toni Morrison, perhaps the greatest American novelist of her